Before I ever wrote any fiction in my adult life, as a child I wrote fiction, um, I was a poet. For years and years I was a poet and went to graduate school for a very long time to study with poets and didn't take fiction workshops and didn't write short stories and certainly never thought I would write a novel. And somehow after my kids were born, I found it harder and harder to achieve that kind of obsessive, you know, I think of it as a, uh, a magnifying glass with the sun burning a hole, you know, <laughs> through in a tiny hole in something, that it just became really difficult. And about that time I started to have a voice in my head, um, who was, and it was not my voice, and there was no story. And one day I just decided to sit down and see what, what was going on with this and what I could do with it. Cornelia Brown, as we meet her in Love Walked In, she's 31. She is a little adrift in her life, um, although I wouldn't say she's an unfocused person at all. She's waiting for her real life to begin and really believes that it will begin. And right at the beginning of the book, it comes, and a man walks into her cafe, and she thinks, okay, the real life is starting. And it is. She's right, but it's not starting. It's not the life she supposes is starting. And the connection she'll forge will be strong, but not necessarily with him. I think that really what was at the heart of Love Walked In was a relationship between two people. And I think that there are so many relationships and different kinds of relationships going on in Belong to Me. And, and I couldn't really say which carries the most weight. And they all feel central to me in a way. Um, but there are parent-child and brother-sister and marriages and friendship is a very powerful thing in this novel, friendships between women. Some books I've read recently that I've loved, I love The Girls by Lori Lansons, and it's about conjoined twins. So I've been making everyone I know read that book. And uh, All Saints by a writer named Liam Callanan. This book is really a wonderful book. Um, and then I'll go back to E.M. Forrester's books, pretty much all of them, um, again and again, because of it just, it makes me a better person to read his books, but I also think it makes me, if not makes me a better writer, makes me more, and more convinced that this is a noble profession. This is something that's great to do. I know the feeling of reading a book, finishing it, and needing to talk about it. I love the idea that my book might prompt that feeling to arise in some other reader. I think it means that, that as a reader, you're connecting with a book. The books that I most love, I walk away from feeling a more fierce connection with my world and the people in it and feel um, more uh, sort of elevated and more able to love the things in my life that are there for me to love. And that's happiness, you know. Um, to me, it's not fluffy, but I think that what I want is for people to feel that when they finish my book, for the, to walk around with it for a while and to kind of see their own lives in a, a deep and good way. So I think I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm one of the writers who does write, at least in part, to make people happy.